Hey guys, it's me, Julia Lee, and today I'm going to talk about dog adoption. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you might have seen some cameos from my dog, Ezra. There's quite a bit I want to cover on this topic. If you're thinking about adopting a dog, I strongly encourage that you watch the entire video, but I will also be including timestamps in the description below if you want to navigate to a specific part. More and more people are realizing that there are so many dogs around the world that need our help and they're choosing the route of adoption over getting a dog from a breeder. It also seems like adopting a rescue dog is like the new trend these days. I'm just saying that there used to be a stigma about getting a dog from the pound, but now they're calling hey, rescue hey, dogs and it's like everybody hey, in the world hey, wants stop, one. Don't. So what I want to talk about in this video is whether it's the right thing for you. I wanted to make this video for anyone who is considering adopting a dog and hopefully you can learn from my experience and it'll help better prepare you for that if you choose to do so. So to give you guys some background on my personal experience with dogs, my family has had two family dogs. So our first dog, Lulu, was a half black lab, half border collie. We had her for about two and a half years before we rehomed her. Um, my parents were working full time. My brother and I were like eight and 11 years old, so we were fairly young. And basically we couldn't really do much in terms of helping my parents with the responsibility of having a dog. She was a fairly medium sized dog. We were a bit too little to be walking her on our own and they realized that they didn't have the energy and the time to properly care for her and to train her. Years later, we got another family dog, Coco. She was an American Eskimo. She lived for about 13 years before she passed away in 2018 in February. We got her when I was 16, so my brother and I were older. We had gone to university, we moved out, and even though she was the family dog, really she was more of my mom's dog, and she was the one who cared for her and trained her ever since she was a puppy. And then my partner, Roman, has had a number of family cats, but they've never had a family dog. So basically, neither of us have had direct experience being the sole owner of a pet. So Roman and I adopted Ezra from Redemption Paws last year in March. Redemption Paws is an amazing rescue organization. They save dogs primarily from climate change and disaster situations. Um, they bring a lot of their dogs over from Texas. They have an amazing group of volunteers who drive over there and bring them across the border. I will put a link in the description to their website if you're interested. We were actually signed up to foster because neither of us had been the primary caretaker of a pet and we thought that it would be best if we fostered first so that we could get a sense of how much it would affect our lifestyle and whether it was a suitable time for us to get a dog. Ezra was our first foster dog and fast forward like 20 minutes of him being in our place, I basically turned to Roman and said, I wanna adopt him. Let me know when you're ready. Ezra just had such a good temperament and he settled in right away. It was like when they tell you that dogs know when they're rescued. He was timid when we picked him up, but we brought him home and he just got comfortable right away. It was like he knew, sick, I've been rescued. These are my new parents, this is my new home. I'm down, done. And it was kind of just that instant connection where you're like, you'll know when you know. And I knew 20 minutes in, so we adopted him. Needless to say, it was a very impromptu decision and I'm thankful that everything worked out, but I definitely learned a lot from the process and I hope that you guys can take some of my learnings and apply it to your own decision-making process of whether or not you should be adopting your dog or what type of dog you should adopt. So first thing is first, can you afford to have a dog? And when I say afford, I mean comfortably afford to have a dog. You don't want it to be a strain on your finances. You want to be able to include a dog into your life while being able to comfortably provide for yourself and for the dog. So when you adopt a dog, there's typically an adoption fee that you pay to the rescue organization to help them maintain you know, them running their rescue missions and also pay for some of the vetting costs that they have for all the dogs that they take in. This cost may or may not include neutering or spaying the dog. Aside from the adoption cost of the dog, there's also upfront expenses for basic needs. So that would be like a collar or a harness, an ID tag, a leash, 
food bowls, basic grooming supplies like nail clipper, um, shampoo, hairbrush, etc. And then you also have to consider that some of those are monthly recurring costs like the food, the treats, the poop bag. And then there's also pet insurance if you choose to opt into that. If you don't opt into pet insurance, then you need to have a comfortable amount of funds set aside should anything happen with your pet. For example, with our family dog Coco, we didn't have pet insurance and she was generally very healthy, but there was an incident where she broke her tooth while she was chewing a bone and we had to dish out like $1,300 for the dental work to get her tooth fixed so that it wouldn't rot. So if you're not going to opt into pet insurance, then you have to have a comfortable amount of funds set aside should there be an unexpected accident or an emergency illness that requires vet care. And then you also have to consider that because these are rescue dogs, you don't know their full health history and there may be health issues that also arise that you might need to have funds set aside for. Another thing you wanna consider are other expenses that aren't necessary, but are highly recommended, such as training. Training is a lot of work. When I first got Ezra, I was basically YouTubing a bunch of videos on how to train the dog. And honestly, I taught him quite a bit this way. Leave it. Look at me, look at me. No, look at me. Good boy! Okay. High five. Good boy! Good boy. But it just didn't feel sustainable to put in that much time. So we opted to sign him up for a foundational skills training course at When Hounds Fly in Toronto. And having a professional trainer teach you how and what to teach your dog is just super beneficial. Like I can look it up myself, but having a dedicated hour where someone is telling you what you need to teach them and how to teach it to them means that all you have to take away from that is being able to consistently train them at home. You don't have to look up how to do the things because you've already been taught. And then a positive byproduct of taking them to training classes is that the dogs are learning in a classroom setting with other dogs. So they're learning in an environment that's already a bit distracting and it's always hard for dogs to take something that they've learned in like a very quiet undistracted environment like your home and then to also apply them outside like basically people say that you have to train them at home and then outside with a little bit of distraction and then outside with a lot of distraction you basically have to teach them the same thing in different types of environments because once you throw in you know the fresh air and the other dogs and the people and the squirrels and all these other things you know you no longer have their attention and it's hard for them to execute on the things that they learned in a really quiet environment. So personally, I found it really helpful for him to learn these things in an environment that has other dogs because it just helps better prepare him to then execute that in the real world. And then you also have to consider that again, when we're talking about rescue dogs, you don't know their full history. So there may be behavioral traits that emerge that then require professional training. So again, ideally, this is something that you have funds set aside for should you need to use them. The next big consideration is lifestyle and time. A dog lives on average from 10 to 13 years, and this can go anywhere up to like 18 years, depending on the breed and the size and the health of that dog. So you are signing up for like a lifetime commitment. When you sign up to adopt a dog and to bring a dog into your home, they become part of your family and you're responsible for caring for that dog until they're gone. Is that something that you can confidently sign up for? Does your work schedule and your lifestyle allow for it? Do you have a plan in place for when you go away or when you go on a vacation, who's gonna take care of the dog? If you're adopting a pet on your own, can you realistically manage all the responsibility? If you're adopting a pet with a partner, is your relationship in a good place? Are you stable enough to introduce a dog into the home? Have you talked about how you're gonna divide up the responsibility? You need to be able to spend at least an hour a day giving your dog direct attention. And that might include, you know, exercising, grooming, playing, or even just hanging out together on the couch and watching something on TV. Dogs do best with routine and they need to be let out at least three times a day to poop and to pee and to exercise. And dogs that have higher energy might also need some more interactive toys that they can play with. 
So a tip for when you're looking to adopt a dog, don't just look at the breed. Um, I know the breed can tell you a lot about the temperament and the energy level of the dog, but dogs are different just like people and each dog might have different needs. So even though a dog is of a specific breed, they might still be a bit higher energy or they might be lower energy, but the point is you have to understand what that specific dog's temperament is. You also wanna consider age because any dog that is from a puppy to around two years is still pretty puppyish and they need a lot more exercise and attention as opposed to a dog that's three years and older who you know has kind of leveled out a bit. But again, it goes back to understanding the specific dog that you're interested in, and you can do that by reading their description. So Ezra was estimated to be a year when we got him, and because we were his foster parents, uh, we didn't get a whole lot of information about him. It literally just said, he likes to play fetch, wants to be with people, high energy. And to be honest, Roman and I were looking for a dog that was a bit more medium energy. So considering we adopted him, we definitely had to make some changes in our lifestyle to accommodate his needs. Did you do this? Was this you? Don't turn away. Did you eat this shoe? Why did you eat this shoe? Hmm? Look at this shoe. Ezra. Why did you eat this shoe? Dogs that chew on things usually are bored and you need to find a way to tire them out. So when we first got Ezra, I was taking him out for like a half an hour walk in the morning and then we would do like a half an hour session of fetch in the afternoon after work. After time, we just came to understand that this was not enough exercise for him. You know, even when we came home, he would kind of just be constantly bothering us and wanting to play with us. He just wasn't tired out. So now he gets a half an hour walk in the morning and a half an hour session of fetch. And then after work, he gets about the same, if not a bit more playtime with fetch, since he loves fetch. We found that this tires him out and a tired dog is a happy dog. And a tired dog is snoozing and not destroying your things. And these are all things that, you know, we could have learned along the way if we fostered him for longer rather than adopting him right away. But again, we made that decision and we are happily able to adjust our lifestyle to accommodate for that. But for those of you who are not fostering and are adopting a dog, please read the descriptions that the foster parents write. They put a lot of time and effort into those and they're often very detailed. Like, you want a cuddly dog? They'll tell you if he's cuddly. They'll tell you if he's affectionate. They'll tell you if he's scared. They'll tell you if he's kind of nervous and if he has some issues that he's working through, if he's house trained, if he's not, how he's doing in his crate. They will give you all the information they've learned about the dog from taking care of them because everyone is in it to win it. Everyone wants the best situation for the dog and for the owner, so they wanna make sure it's a good fit. So when you're looking through adoptable dogs and you're trying to pick the right one, please don't just be looking through the photos and the size of the dog because those aren't necessarily the most accurate criteria for how much that dog will affect your lifestyle. Patience. Do you have the time and patience to work with a dog through its adolescence, its chewing, its energy level, and its house training? Are you willing to train and exercise your patience? I have a friend who recently adopted a dog who used to be a street dog, and he's a little bummed out that he isn't as cuddly as he hoped he would be. But he was a street dog, and these dogs can often take more time to settle in, to trust you, to get comfortable, and to get cuddly. Rescue dogs can often have past trauma, and they just need some more time to bond and for reassurance in the beginning weeks that you have them. Just think about it. They've sometimes traveled here from over halfway around the world, you know, they were settling in nicely with their foster and then they've got moved over to you and they don't know who you are and they're confused again. You need to understand that the relationship that you have with your rescued dog will be like any other relationship. It will take time to build that foundation of trust. So as I mentioned earlier, part of the reason why I pulled the trigger so fast with Ezra is because he just had such a good temperament and settled in right away. But there was a situation in the first week that we had him where he kind of turned around and bit me. So to explain, he was sleeping, curled up 
all cute in a little ball in front of me, and I just had the urge to hug him with my arms. I just wanted to hug him all around, like, you're safe now. So I leaned over and I put my arms over him and he gave me a warning growl. But I've heard that warning growl before from my old dog Coco and she would never do anything. So I did it again. He turned around and snapped at me and basically left a mark right under my eye from his tooth. I was super shocked. I was super upset. I felt like a mom whose son just told her I hate you for the first time. And I went to the washroom and I was like bawling, crying. I was just so shaken up. And you know, I have to say that in that moment, like my feelings towards him were kind of like shaken also. I was like, how I've treated you so well. Like how could you turn around and do that to me? I could tell that he knew right away that he did something wrong and he kind of kept walking up to the washroom to like check on me but I wasn't inviting him in like he could feel and sense that like I was still upset so after I gathered my emotions then I finally called him over and I forgave him because at the end of the day he's a dog and he doesn't even really understand what he did wrong he's been with me all of like what a week and I'm pretty certain that he didn't even really know where he was in that situation since he didn't lift his head up the first time. So that situation was really just a reminder of like, I don't know this dog. I can't treat him like I did my old dog because he's not Coco and he's not going to react the same way she did because he didn't grow up the same way and he doesn't have the same experiences that she has and I need to learn these things about him and then I need to train him properly. So the point is that you need patience. You need patience to train, you need patience to grow that bond with them and you just can't expect they're going to be the dog that you always wanted them to be. So to sum it up, number one, assess your finances and make sure that you can provide for a dog and still live comfortably. Number two, Thoughtfully consider your lifestyle and think about how you'll manage the responsibility of having a dog. And number three, be prepared to train and exercise not only your dog, but also your patience. Dogs don't come readily trained and it can take time to build a relationship with a rescue dog. But as they say, all good things take time. And if you're willing to be patient and you're willing to have the right mindset and are willing to put in the work, then I can guarantee you that you will gain a lifelong friend who gives you unconditional love. And there's nothing better than that. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ezra, sit down. No whining. Attention and care as raw.